Hi everybody and welcome to part 4 of my uh, PS2 collection. Um, apologies for the bad lighting in the last episode, I managed to um, get that sorted for this video. Okay, and let's uh, continue on with the next game on, on my uh, in my collection, that is uh, Destroy All Humans. Uh, this was developed by Pandemic, who also made uh, Mercenaries and the Star Wars Battlefront games. And uh, sadly, no, no longer with us, but uh, they leave a great leg great legacy, and this uh, game is uh, definitely one of them. Uh, you basically play as this alien who's invaded the um, goddamn glare, <laughs> invaded the uh, like Earth, Earth during the 1950s, and um, yeah, it's it's really um, like slapstick. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's a yeah, sort of third person, uh, um, not quite free roam, but you get like these certain levels, and you can sort of mess about with them in certain ways, and like cause as much chaos as possible. So uh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty fun game. Uh, next up, we have Beatdown. Fist of Vengeance. Uh, this is very similar to the um, uh, Namco game Urban Rain. Uh, this is uh, published and I believe developed by Capcom. And uh, you get to play as like, a variety of different characters and uh, it's basically like an open world uh, beat em up, uh, like 3D beat em up, like uh, Street of Rage or um, Golden Axe, something like that. <clears throat> okay, next up we have Resident Evil Outbreak and Resident Evil, Evil Outbreak File 2. Now these are basically more, the more traditional Resident Evils, not the um, third person like over the shoulder like Resident Evils you know as today. Um, <clears throat> this is one of the last sort of uh, attempts at the more sort of tr traditional style of Resident Evil so to speak and uh, the first one uh, we never actually got um, online as you can see from the uh, front cover but uh, even with the second one we um, like here, over here in Europe we didn't really have like a good like internet setup you know, <laughs> like we we do now so um, a lot of these both of these were sort of primarily played like single player um, and then they're yeah, okay, you know, they're not <clears throat> amazing, and um, they are pretty tough as well, but um, yeah, they're, they're, they're fun for like a like couple of hours sort of diversion, they're sort of uh, cut into like little uh, chunks of like uh, chapters, you can play as like a variety, variety of different characters. Uh, next up we have Rygar, the legendary adventure. Uh, this is very much like um, God of War, um, with a little bit of um, the sort of fighting style of like on, uh, on a Musha game, and um, yeah, it's pretty good. It actually came out before um, God of War. This came out in the, I think it was two thousand one. Uh, oh no, two thousand three even, and um, so yeah, this came out a few years before God of War, and. Um, it's uh, it's based on the um, uh, NES game, uh, which I've never played. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty good. Quite short. Uh, next up, we have 007 Nightfire. Uh, now this was one of the last um, first-person uh, shooters that um, EA made. I know they made. Uh, Golden Eye Rogue Agent, but that one was terrible. Uh, this one, this one though is actually really good. I'd, I'd say it's up there with um, Golden Eye and the S64. Really, really, really good game. Uh, next up, Call of Duty 2, Big Red One. Uh, this basically takes um, uh, from like what the um, developers of this game has learned from uh, the first game. And uh, made made it even better. Basically, um, I feel that the uh, checkpoints are a lot better. I feel that the game's a lot more accessible. 
Um, the whole, like the frame rate is a million miles better than the first one. Um, the gunplay is a lot faster and more uh, responsive. And overall I just feel this, that this game is um, so so much better than the first one. I do like the first one, I just feel that this one just uh, chumps it for me. Uh, next up we have Tomb Raider Anniversary. Uh, this is the collection ed collector's edition. Uh, this comes with a, um, a soundtrack CD and also a DVD with um, a sort of documentary uh, talking about Tomb Raider from uh, its sort of humble beginnings right up to uh, this game's release. Um, and yeah, this game's pretty good. I, I don't actually play this version that much any anymore because of um, me getting the uh, HD collection with um, this game, Legend and uh, Underworld. Um, but I, I keep this around for like collector's purposes because I personally feel it's quite nice. Uh, next up we have Klonoa 2, uh, Lunatis Veil. Vale. Uh, now I have not played this one, although I have played the original on the PS1, I absolutely love it. And uh, I can't wait to uh, get started on this one, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And um, yeah, if you've not played the Klonoa games, basically they're um, uh, 2D slash... Um, or two, primarily 2D with like 3D sort of backgrounds and um, that you can interact with and um, it's a really um, really interesting sort of puzzle platformer Hi highly underrated uh, next up we have Siphon Filter, the Omega Strain uh, I've not played this one um, I have played the original on PS1, I, lo I love that um, I've also played the uh, the PSP games and uh, not really too fond of those ones, but um, yeah, I, I will give this game a go when when I get the chance to. Uh, next up, we have Spider-Man Two. Uh, really good game, although I feel it's a little bit overrated, in my opinion. Um, the out the outside parts of this game are fantastic. Um, what the way you can sort of like swing around the uh, New York City and uh, just it's one of the first like games where you felt like a superhero um, the way this sort of swim mechanic worked and um, how you can sort of get from one place to the other so quickly and um, uh, the mini the mini games weren't like the side missions weren't too great um, they sort of got a little bit repetitive after a while and the yeah, interior sections as well were like really frustrating with the uh, rather awkward uh, camera but other than that it was um you yeah, know it was it was I, I thought it was pretty decent I don't think it's as good as people say it is but um it's still it's still a good game uh, next up we have Tony Hawk's Underground now this is the other uh, Tony Hawk game that I really enjoyed um, I talked about free in the uh, previous like part of my uh, collection and this one you uh, create your own character and you um, uh, tour, tour around the world with um, your uh, friend who's like your cameraman um, but then he sort of um, uh, has like issues like certain issues with like what you're doing and uh, you end up sort of like having a real argument, like not working together and you basically try and uh, uh, get revenge on him basically and um, yeah it's a pretty good uh, a pretty good story um, the first time you could actually get off your board which was pretty interesting um, I mean it has it has gotten better as um, uh, time has gone gone on with like other skating games like the skate series for example but um, yeah really really good game I felt the series went kind of downhill after uh, Tony Hawk's Underground. Uh, next up we have Cold Winter. And this is a fir first person shooter. And th think of it as a a budget 
James Bond's game. <laughs> and, uh, that's pretty much um, the definition I can give of Cold Winter. But um, it is really, really good. It's really, really fun. Um, it's sort of a combination of GoldenEye and uh, I would say like either Half-Life or Red Faction. Um, it's got a really uh, intriguing sort of story. Um, like all the characters have some interesting sort of uh, backstory that you all sort of slowly uh, get revealed as you play through the game. And um, yeah, I put... I thought it was pretty good. <clears throat> Next up we have Crazy Taxi. Do I really need to say why this is so good? <laughs> uh, I, I used to play this back in the arcades and uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, uh, now this this is a version with, I think with all the uh, uh, original sort of licensed songs uh, like um, uh, The Offspring and uh, other, other, other artists like that and uh, Offspring and Bad, Bad Religion um, and yeah I, did, I wasn't really too happy with the uh, the recent uh, arcade uh, remake on like 360 and PS, uh, PS3 because they sort of took a lot of the stuff out which um, sort of added to the arcade experience and uh, but yeah it's, um, it's an arcade like racer where you uh, ride around the taxi and you sort of uh, pick up certain people who have places to go. It's very, it's very much like if you played the uh, the Simpsons Road Rage. It's pretty much what they uh, what they stole from. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I can't believe um, EA got away with that uh, ripping the stuff from this game. But yeah, that's another story. <clears throat> Uh, next up we have Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, in my eyes this is the the daddy of uh, GTA games. Um, not not simply because of um, not because of the the content available or um, it, it wasn't the best graphically looking GTA in the series but um, I think what really Impressed people that was the the star the style of the game the the fact that it it, it didn't hold back in uh, giving people the essence of like eighties like be it the fashion the uh, the sort of color palette the um, the music which is some of the best probably the best soundtrack in any game I've ever played and a really really fun GTA game uh, to boot and uh, yeah if you haven't played this then you need to it's one of Rockstar's finest uh, next up we have The Thing uh, now this is based on the 1980 movie uh, I have not played it um, I've heard that it's kind of difficult control wise but um, yeah I, I recently watched the uh, the movie and decided to pick it up um, around the same time and uh, yeah can't wait to play it okay next up we have Maximo uh, Maximo Army of Zin uh, now these are based on the Ghouls and Ghosts slash Ghosts and Goblins series. And uh, I have played uh, Maximo. And uh, I don't know, I just I found it really hard to get into because um, not often did I play sort of platformers at this time on the PS2 that really challenged you apart from maybe Jack 2. That was um, too challenging. <laughs> and uh, in a way this is as well. Uh, mainly because like every time... Uh, you get hit, you sort of lose armor, and uh, every time you uh, like lose amount of lives or like die, you sort of use up these credits, and uh, yeah, it get, it gets a little bit frustrating <laughs> this one, but um, it is um, very well well designed, and um, it still it still has its moments of uh, being quite fun, but. Uh, a lot of the frustration uh, outweighs the uh, enjoyment factor. Uh, Army is in. I have not played yet. Um, 
and I sort of hope it's a little bit more uh, forgiving than the uh, than the first game. And uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of want to beat the first um, Maximo Goes to Glory, the uh, the previous one I just showed you first uh, before I move on to this. So yeah. Okay, next up we have Castlevania. Uh, this is one of the uh, 3D Castlevania games, um, and in my eyes, one of the better ones. I I definitely prefer this to uh, Lords Lords of Shadow. I thought didn't really get get on with that game at all, uh, but this this one's pretty decent. Um, it's it takes a lot of elements from Devil May Cry, um, but I don't think it's as uh, well polished uh, uh, gameplay wise as. Uh, as that series is, but um, it's still it's still decent. <clears throat> and next we have Shadow of Memories. Uh, this is a um, an adventure game where <laughs> the main the main character in the middle here, Ike, uh, basically in the opening <laughs> cutscene dies, and. Uh, but you get like a second chance of um, uh, basically like saving yourself and um, trying to figure out who killed you and why. And um, there are many different chapters, and um, you sort of slowly unravel what's uh, what's going on. Uh, the only thing I will say there are no sort of checkpoints for each chapter, so if you um, if you sort of mess up at any point. Uh, you have to start all over from the uh, the start of that chapter, and uh, you can't skip the cutscenes as well, which I hate. <laughs> but um, but other than that, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. It's one of the more unique titles on the PS2. Uh, next up, we have Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Uh, this is a uh, free uh, third person, like almost isometric uh, dungeon crawler. Uh, sort of similar to uh, uh, Diablo 3 and uh, yeah it's really really good uh, it still looks fantastic today and um, yeah you can play uh, two players I believe yeah two players and uh, yeah one of the better uh, co-op ex co experiences on the PS2 Uh, next up we have Area 51. Uh, this is a first person shooter based on the arcade shooter uh, from the 90s and um, has many sort of voiceovers, uh, uh, voiceover talent like uh, David Duchovny and even uh, I think Marilyn Manson's uh, one of the voices in this game as well which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah it's, it's okay it's not one of the, it's definitely not um, Oh, there was, there was a um, there was a tagline I felt I saw for this like it was um, supposed to be like a Halo beta and uh, yeah it's definitely not that and um, it's definitely not uh, the best uh, PSC's best FPS ever. Sorry, PSM two. I love you, but uh, I love you as a magazine. But uh, no, no, I disagree. Um, but it's it's okay. It's not it's not terrible, but it's not amazing either. Uh, next up we have 13. Uh, this is a cell shaded uh, first person shooter. Uh, almost like a sort of comic book style. Um, I haven't played a lot of it, uh, mainly because I played the first mission and failed miserably at it. But um, yeah, I, I, I certainly like the style and the more sort of serious uh, tone that um, from first glance you don't think it has. But um, yeah, it's got that interesting... Uh, Interesting story to it by lots of things. Uh, next, up we have Peter Jackson's King Kong, uh, the game of the fish of the movie, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. I I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Um, I thought it was going to be like a another license sort of uh, uh, cash and grab, it, as it were. But um, yeah, the um, Production levels of this game are pretty good. It actually reminds me of um, of the Lord of the Rings games on the PS2 as well. Sort of that same 
uh, level of production values and uh, uh, gameplay plays pretty nice. The voice acting is very good. Um, you get cutscenes from the movies sort of uh, uh, as a sort of prologue to each chapter, which is um, a nice touch. And um, yeah, it's a pretty solid game. I haven't got to the actual parts where you play as uh, King Kong, and um, I've heard they're not quite as good as uh, people were hoping it it was going to be. But um, the, uh, the sort of FPS parts where you play as um, uh, I forget his name, like uh, Jack, um, uh, they they they're pretty decent. They're pretty decent. Uh, next up is the Mark Cree. Uh, this is a third-person action stealth game uh, with the uh, predominantly sort of stealth stealth elements. Uh, you play as this uh, tribesman who um, is trying to protect uh, this village and um, and like keep it safe from like uh, hunters and um, you have this bird with you who um, will sort of scout ahead and uh, so you can sort of um, uh, prepare yourself for for the enemies you're about to face and um, yeah it's a, a really uh, refreshing uh, change from the usual sort of um, uh, hack and slash like third person <laughs> games you get on the PS2 and it's um, it's a toughie it's a really really tough like from uh, chapter 3 onwards but um, it's very rewarding when, when you do get past a certain point Uh, next up we have Aggressive Inline. Uh, this is similar to um, the Tony Hawk's games. Uh, the only difference is you're on rollerblades. Um, I've not played it, but I, I know friends who have, and um, they speak nothing but good things about it. Uh, next up we have Shadow Hearts. Uh, this is a... Uh, JRPG with um, a sort of a survival horror t uh, sort of tone to it and um, it has a very unique feature where you have this um, uh, battle clock system where you have to sort of uh, say like the sort of clocks ticking like so and you have to sort of hit certain parts of it to um, to get like a like better like crit critical hits or something like that and um, yeah it's a pretty interesting game it's got a pretty, pretty interesting story to it where you, your main character like um, can sort of turn into a, a, a like demon or beast and uh, uh, in turn you become more powerful but you sort of um, I think you like <laughs> lose your uh, more health if you do so I, I'm not Entirely sure because I've only played like the first half hour or so, but um, for what I have played, I'm very, very intrigued. Uh, next up, we have Brothers in Arms and in Blood. Uh, I've not played this one either. Uh, as I said in a previous video, I'm playing uh, Road to Hill 30, and um, yeah, I'm kind of liking it. And I'm guessing this is sort of uh, a, fo a follow up to, to that game. So. Uh, next up we have Kaya Dark Lineage. Uh, this is a third person platformer where you play as Kaya, uh, Kaya and um, you basically sort of control uh, like the winds and stuff and uh, I there's another one I haven't played but um, I've heard it's, it's something of a hidden gem so I thought I would pick it up. <clears throat> oh, actually. Uh, next up, we have Shadow Hearts Covenant. Uh, this is the sequel to uh, Shadow Hearts. Uh, I have not played it, but um, again, like the original Shadow Hearts, I've heard very good things. There was a third game, but I, I, I've heard that that's the worst one in the series and kind of killed the, the series entirely. Okay, uh, next up we have uh, Rayman 10th Anniversary. This comes with 
uh, Rayman M, which is like a sort of Mario Party style game and uh, doesn't really interest interest me. Uh, Rayman Revolution, which is uh, Rayman 2. And uh, Rayman 3 uh, Hoolim Havoc, which is um, the direct sequel to, to uh, Rayman 2. And uh, yeah, I played uh, both Rayman, Rayman 2 and 3 a little bit and uh, really, really enjoy both. Uh, I think they're really uh, underrated uh, platformers. Um, no interest in uh, playing Ray Rayman M, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty good uh, collection. <clears throat> Uh, next up we have Urban Rain, uh, which uh, as I said is a, um, a similar title to um, uh, Beat Down Fish, Fist of Vengeance and uh, you actually, uh, it actually has a similar fighting system to the Tekken franchise, um, no surprise because it's like Namco and I think I think you can unlock uh, from what looks like uh, Paul and uh, Martial Law which is... Um, a nice, nice little bonus for if you're a fan of the Tekken series. Okay, next up we have X Men Legends Two. Uh, another one I haven't played. I know there's quite a few of these, um, but uh, as I said, I played the first X Men Legends and really enjoy that. And I've heard this one's even better, so I can't wait to get to it when I do. Uh, next up we have the Getaway Black Monday, uh, really really good sequel to uh, the first Getaway which I wasn't really a fan of, it felt a little bit unfinished to me, uh, but this one is um, a lot better, they sort of fixed a lot, uh, Team Soho fixed a lot of the things that were wrong with the first game, uh, you basically play as uh, three different characters and um, uh, each of which has um, their own uh, sort of strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you play as um, uh, a cop, um, a like ex boxer who's very good at a sort of melee, like melee hand to hand combat, and this girl who's very good at sort of like stealth and uh, sort of uh, ac uh, acrobatics and stuff. And um, yeah, I, I feel that the uh, variety of missions were very good as well. Uh, there was very few points of this game where I felt really frustrated probably near the end I was but um, other than that I had a lot more fun with this than I did with the original game so uh, I highly recommend it uh, next up we have Deus Ex uh, another game I haven't played I know this this one's kind of um, blasphemous because it's one regarded as one of the best games ever and um, by that, but I have played Human Revolution, and I really enjoy that. So um, there's pretty much the reason why I bought uh, this game. I just love the uh, the element of choice choices you can make, and um, yeah, I, I I've heard that it pretty much um, took elements from this game. Uh, so I uh, can't wait to play this one. Obviously, graphically, it look, looks a bit dated, but um, I'm sure gameplay-wise, it still holds up. <clears throat> right, next up we have Burnout Revenge. This is the fourth entry in the Burnout series. Um, I feel this was the point where I was starting to um, uh, kind of get bored of the Burnout series. Because um, I, I, I enjoy... I, Enjoyed the first one, but not, um, you know, as a first entry, it was okay. It wasn't anything special. Uh, the second one I loved. Uh, the third one I loved even more. Uh, this one, I did like it, but um, I felt there was a little bit too much put into it. Um, and they kind of screwed up the crash mode, which um, uh, was kind of a deal breaker for me at the time. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to give it a second chance. Uh, next up we have Final Fantasy XII, um, I've not played it, I don't know if I ever will because um, I've had it's really really long and uh, it's it's one it's one of the s games in the series that really uh, splits a lot of people's opinions, uh, but who knows, maybe I'll, I'll play it one day. 
Okay, next up we have Second Sight, uh, which is um, from the makers of the Time Splitter series. Um, probably one of the, the better games they've made, in my view, because um, just because of the fact that it's original story, original IP, so to speak, and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, elements between uh, the shooting from Time Splitters. Although this is in third person, not first person, like the Time Splitters games, uh, with a lot of uh, stealth elements as well, and some some work well, some some don't, but um, for the most part, this game is. Um, Pretty flawless. I uh, can't really fool it that much. And uh, Free Radical did a fantastic job. Um, I'd love to see a sequel, but that probably never happens. So. It's a shame. It's one definitely one of the hidden gems on the PS2. Uh, next up is Downhill Domination, uh, which is a um, uh, BMX game. Uh, Sort of like a cross between SSX Tricky and Road Rash, where um, you have these uh, many different uh, levels. Um, you sort of go downhill like uh, an SSX game, uh, but you can sort of uh, play dirty and sort of <laughs> take out your opponents like in uh, Road Rash, which is pretty cool. Um, the only uh, thing I disapprove of is the um, the voice acting. A lot of the uh, Characters are very sort of cliche, and they have uh, some of the dodgiest accents I've ever heard. But um, yeah, the game itself is really, really fun. Uh, next up, we have the Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers. <clears throat> uh, much like uh, uh, Return of the King, uh, but not quite as polished, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's also uh, two player co-op, so um, if you've got a friend, then uh, I'm sure you have a blast playing this. Okay, next up we have Killer Seven, uh, another game I haven't played, but um, it's uh, it's Capcom, and they were really really good in these days, uh, not so much anymore, and also. Um, Created by Suda51, and uh, I absolutely love his games. Like uh, one of the other games I mentioned, uh, Mich Michigan Report from Hell, um, Shadows of the Damned, one of my favorite games of the last generation. Uh, Lollipop Chainsaw has its moments as well, uh, not quite as good, but uh, yeah. Uh, you basically play as uh, seven uh, split personalities and. Um, uh, one of which is uh, Garcia and Smith. He basically, if one of your characters dies, he can sort of go back and uh, uh, bring them back to life again. Uh, but uh, if if he if he doesn't, then it's like game over or something. Um, it's really 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 weird. Um, it's a long way old sort of third person shooter uh, with like survival horror elements, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's quite hard though. Uh, next up we have Black. Uh, now unlike <laughs> Area 51 as I mentioned before, this for me this this is the best uh, first person shooter on the PS2 along with uh, probably like Time Splitters Future Perfect. Um, mainly because like obviously the graphics, um, it's actually created by uh, Criterion who made the Burnout games. I mean, visually, this game is superb. Um, the gunplay and the um, the sound effects, um, top draw. Um, the only the only downside I would say is the story. Uh, they sort of tacked on this um, like FBI like conspiracy story, which doesn't really um, you don't really care for. <laughs> um, it's just there to sort of. Um, add like filler to the game but um yeah the the game itself is um absolutely super one of the best uh first person sh shooter experiences you'll get on the ps2 or, or any system for that matter okay next up we have ssx tricky this is a um 
the second game in the series. Um, in my in my opinion, I, I did enjoy it more than uh, SSX3 because of the uh, variety of different tracks and the more sort of colourful um, uh, character palette that you get in this game and also the environments looked uh, a lot more vibrant as well. And uh, yeah, one of the best games on the system and you should uh, definitely play it if you haven't. Okay, and that is it for uh, part four of my PS2 collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you will have one more part. If not, then definitely be over in two. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you for the next part of my PS2 collection. Take care, everyone.